Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I love that intro. That's all I got to (laughs) say. Welcome to Hashtag Sports. We are always trending. You can find all of our socials on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We are also on iTunes and Spotify. Tonight, we are sponsored by Mr. Rogers Holmes in association with Cryer Media and our 2022-2023 charity is William the William Syndrome Foundation. Now, I said that to say this. Paul, this is not going to be like some of our normal content because mm-hmm. most of the people were the Bills guys. We're the yeah. two guys that drive in the car and talk about the Bills, even I though we haven't, still, we haven't been in the car in a while. I think this still is, you know, Buffalo Bills relative important yes right because you know it when you talk about what's happening with lamar and then you look at how things went with josh and then how things go with other quarterbacks in the league all these conversations they they are ultimately all related right so mm-hmm. what is happening with lamar how that situation has been handled what to expect how it plays out there's a lot that has to do with the precedent sent by Josh Allen and, and other quarterbacks inside the NFL. So I, I think it's a relevant conversation across the board. I think it is too. And we're going to mention some things, some some buzzwords you guys might hear tonight, such as pro ready, green. Um, you know, certain instances that when we talk about certain players, especially, you know, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, maybe Joe Burrow, maybe Patrick Mahomes. We're going to talk about a lot of guys and, the the common theme of tonight is we're going to hopefully show you guys some of the reasons why Lamar maybe isn't signed and why Allen and a lot of these other quarterbacks, they've already are, are in negotiations and or have their contracts already. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest thing that for me and Paul, we used to, we said this a long time ago when they were both drafted, mm-hmm. you know, Baltimore traded back up into the, into the first round to try to get a fifth year option for Lamar Jackson. I never thought he, the way that he played, he was going to get a second deal in Baltimore. Yeah. You know, I agree with you there, right? Like, I think you have to sort of look at uh, sometime the intent of organizations are not always to retain the players that they draft with the first round pick. Um, you know, you, you got Lamar and you traded into that draft pick to get him because you wanted that fifth year option, which you exercised and used. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But you trade back into the first round to get that extra year. But I I think the way that Baltimore envisioned Lamar as a quarterback led you to believe that resigning him was probably unlikely, you know, with with the type of usage that they gave him. Uh, you know, you look at diminishing returns from players that take a lot of hits and, and Lamar was asked to do a lot and, and carry a lot for that team. And, you know, at some point you get diminishing returns from a player and, and Baltimore is not in the business of getting diminishing returns from players. They let go of a lot of players often like they they turn and burn from an organizational standpoint pretty, pretty regularly. Yeah, um, the, uh, the Costa does that quite a bit. And yeah, you essentially gave um, a majority of what you were going to pay Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. You gave that to um, Roquan Smith. Mm-hmm. That's what you did. Yeah. <laughs> you essentially gave him the money that you were going to give to Lamar Jackson. Right. Now, I'm going to say something right now that may anger a lot of people and it may shed some light on certain things. When Lamar Jackson came into the league, he didn't have this offensive coordinator, but he ended up getting him, which was Greg Roman. Mm-hmm. What Roman was able to do with Jackson was he took Jackson's current skill set and he built an offense around it. Mm hmm. When Josh Allen came into the NFL, he was so green after playing at Wyoming. Mm -hmm. What happened was that Brian Dable developed him Mm -hmm. within the offense that he had, adjusting to the players and everything else that he had. Mm -hmm. He didn't build the offense specifically around Allen. Allen had to learn the offense that was already built. Mm -hmm. I think that is the number one difference that I see, especially when it comes to Allen and and Lamar, because I've been seeing all the tweets of everyone saying, oh, this is what Lamar did. This is what Allen did. Oh, Allen got his deal. Lamar didn't. I understand that, which is why I'm, I'm mentioning Allen. I'm also mentioning that because a lot of our viewers are Bills fans. Right. I think that's the number one thing that I took away from mm-hmm. why he's not signed. You came right. into an offense, and then Greg Roman took over. 
and that offense was built around your current skill set. Mm-hmm. Who's yep. not in Baltimore anymore, Paul? Uh, well, the, the offensive coordinator. That's the one. <laughs> that's her so one. What, what I'm saying is if the offensive coordinator built it around your current skill set and you essentially, in, in the minds of football people, you weren't developed as a quarterback. That's why your phone is not ringing, among mm-hmm. the other reasons that, that right. it's not ringing. Right. So, Paul, what is what is your take either on that or the fact of – I know we talked about this a little bit earlier. Lamar being his own agent. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that's an interesting topic as well. But the yeah. first part that I talked about of Allen came in green, had to learn how to be an NFL quarterback. Lamar came in. And he had an offense that was built around his current skill set. Right. So what do you think about both of those takes? So first off, if there's ever the narrative that Baltimore didn't give Lamar Jackson the opportunity to evolve as a quarterback because they didn't invest, I think it depends on what your definition of investment is, right? If you're trying to get players from a free agent standpoint, and that's what you consider investing in the development of your quarterback, then fine. A a lot of teams will draft a quarterback and then draft young receivers with them. Now, the problem there is that the learning curves of each individual players create variables to whether that player is going to develop or not, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. if Lamar is playing with three young wide receivers who don't know what a don't know what a fucking dig route is, you know, like that's going to seriously impact Lamar's development because there's big gaps in, in the players that he's playing with. Right. Yeah. Baltimore without a doubt did nothing but invest in their offense. When Lamar was drafted, Baltimore used all four of their third and above picks, right? Third round and above. They had four picks that year. They had two first and two thirds. Okay. Yeah. All of them were on offensive players. Their draft was Hayden Hurst at 25, Lamar at 32, Orlando Brown at 83, and Mark Andrews at 86. Okay. The great draft, right? Phenomenal draft. draft. Great draft. Franchise altering draft. Right. Yes. Hayden Hurst ish, right? Mark Andrews with a handcuff to to Hayden Hurst. Well played, right? Good. (laughs) Well played. Um, Well, when they were both together, they were a force. They were a force. Yes. Yeah. And then the following year, you get Marquise Brown at 25. They finally draft a defensive player, that Jalen Ferguson at 85, Miles Boykin, the wide receiver at 93. Boykin doesn't do anything. You move on, right? Third, yeah, but yeah. third round pick. In yeah. 2020, they draft J.K. Dobbins at 55, but they drafted Patrick Queen at 28. Only the second defensive player in three years drafted above the third round. They did draft a defensive tackle in the third round, but in 2020, they had four third round picks. Four wow. third round picks in 2020. They had a, they drafted a defensive tackle. They drafted Devin Duvernay, uh, wide receiver yep. at 92. They drafted Malik Harrison at 98 that year, and then they drafted Tyree Phillips, a tackle at 106. And then the next year, they drafted Rashad Bateman in the first round at 27. You know, like this is what they do: is they draft offensive players over and over and over again. And why do you keep putting coins in that machine, right, over and over and over again? Why do you keep doing it? Because you because you, you need a foundation. Hit. You need yeah. a foundation for something, right? Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you need to have something. Uh, and then Lamar goes down and that team just limps, limps their way through, right? Lamar has yep. been the center of their offense for yes. a long time. The downside is you see what Baltimore and how Baltimore has looked at the future of Lamar Jackson. They looked at him like a running back, right? Where we've seen a lot of organizations just say, listen, we're not gonna. We'll go year to year. We'll make we'll make short term commitments to you, but we're not making long term commitments to you, right? Yeah, like yeah. we're not we're not going to do a long term commitment. And, and given his usage, I understand that. There's going to be people that say that you know, like, well, Lamar and Josh Allen aren't used all that differently. I I think that's a very valid point. Mm-hmm. I think that's a very valid point. The difference is Buffalo addressed Josh Allen's contract two years before they absolutely had to. And Baltimore was willing to gamble that Lamar would bend after having the injuries that he had last season. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you, you gotta you gotta look at the the horses in the race too, Paul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Allen and what does Allen got thirty pounds on him? Right. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that I, I believe that RG three was brought to Baltimore to hopefully mentor 
Jackson mm-hmm. and say, listen, you got to, you got to slow down sometimes mm-hmm. as bills fans. I don't want Allen running as much as he no. does. No, I will tell not. you this. I will tell you that. I was like, I, I hate it when he takes off. Mm-hmm. I want him to sit his, you know, his carcass in that pocket and yeah. throw the ball. Right. Um, but you're saying that he's essentially he had three first round wide receivers and a first round tight end that was given to him since he over and over again, over and over. Uh, since since his draft, including his draft class, they've drafted 12 offensive players in the third round and above. That's that's wow. That's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> He's drafted in twenty eighteen, yeah. right? So if you figure three picks a year, including twenty eighteen, right? So just on average, there's twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, twenty twenty, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. That's five years. That's only fifteen picks if you have three picks a year, <sighs> and tw- and on average, twelve out of the fifteen picks were offensive players, right? Wow. Yeah. So. But unfortunately, Baltimore has a history for doing this with quarterbacks. This isn't just Lamar. They did the same thing with Flacco. Remember, yeah. Flacco, Flacco was uh, was in a contract year, right? And they're like, listen, we don't know if we want to re-sign Joe Flacco. And then Anquan Bolden basically gives him a gigantic contract extension when they win the Super Bowl because Anquan Bolden is a freak. And <laughs> then Baltimore's like, well, what do we do now, right? Yeah. What do we do now? We've been holding on to Flacco. What, where the hell did we go from here? Because, you know, we've, we, we bought as much time as we possibly could with yeah. Flacco. And now it's time to get, you know, you, you got to get off the pot. That's it. You got to, you got to go or you got to get off the pot. And they're doing the exact same thing with Lamar. And, and the amazing thing to me was like, we talked about Josh Allen, right? And when we talked about Josh Allen's contract, we always said Deshaun Watson was the comparable, yeah. right? Whatever happens with Watson you have to know that as a Bills fan and, and expect that That's Allen's going to be block. in that ballpark, right? Yeah. That's your starting block, right? Yeah. Yeah. Baltimore didn't have to beat Watson once. They had to beat Watson twice because in the meantime of Josh Allen signing his contract extension, Deshaun Watson gets suspended for the season or on the commissioner's exempt list, whatever that turned out to be. I don't remember yeah. the details on it. But then he gets traded to Cleveland and then re-signs a new deal that's fully guaranteed. So Baltimore not only had to beat Deshaun Watson once, they had to beat Deshaun Watson twice. They gambled and they lost. Now you have a disgruntled quarterback. And the fact of the matter is, I understand why Lamar is upset, right? He's carried that franchise for years. But the difference is his intent is not their intent. They they don't have the same goals. Baltimore wants Lamar back at something short-term and controllable. The difference is they, you know, Lamar being his own agent, is taking this all very personally, right? Yeah. And I I think that there's some things that organizations and agents can talk about behind closed doors that a player agent can't have the same conversations with a franchise because it burns the city to the ground way faster. Because almost at some point, I understand nobody likes agents, but like Lamar needed help here. And Mm -hmm. maybe he would have navigated this better had he had somebody to be that buffer. But athletes are proud people, man. They don't want to hear negative stuff about themselves, specifically yeah. for the organization that they feel that they carried. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 there's there's certain things that could be said, like you said, uh, behind closed doors when the agents and the team talk where you're, you're probably talking about other players in the league and you don't mm-hmm. want to say that right. to a player. Right. That's, that's sitting right in front of you. It's not how it's, that's not how the business side of it works. Right. And as far as, a lot of the things that are going on, the what I, I believe Lamar was even quoted in saying that Watson he wants to get more guaranteed money than Watson. Yeah, and that's I can un- crazy. I, I know, but I can understand that that a quarterback wanting that. Yeah. However, it the image that that portrays in the media or wherever it's not of a, a player saying, "Hey, I wanted to, I want to do this. I want to help the organization. This is the mm-hmm. this is the team that did this. We we're on the cusp of something great, blah blah blah." Mm-hmm. This is a guy who adamantly every time he tweets or sends something, it's about his contract. Yeah. And the most most recent one that came out was the uh, I requested a trade on March 2nd. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, okay, you, to who? Like, what do you, if you're your own agent, have you been going and calling teams? 
Mm -hmm. Have you been going out there and, and doing your due diligence of calling different right. organizations saying, hey, if, the, if I sign this tag, are you willing to – is that what he did from the second till – what was it? When was the tag official tag sign? 14th or something like that? 13th, I think so. 14th? Yeah. So they, yeah they have somewhere sign. around there. Yeah, somewhere so around there. Was he doing his due diligence in that respect if he was his own agent? Let's see, this is why – Paul just said, being yourself, being your own, like your own agent is tough because you're calling the organization and talking to these GMs. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you need permission to talk to certain players. Mm -hmm. And if you're your own agent, like the logistics of that, I don't know how that works. So maybe he didn't call around and say, hey, listen, if I sign this franchise tag, are you willing to trade for me? Right. Well, and the problem that Lamar ran into was that in order to make phone calls and negotiate on a player, you have to be recognized by the Players Association as a certified agent. So it's not like Lamar could have just contacted, you know, somebody <laughs> and to speak on his behalf, right, to make phone calls for it. Lamar physically had to make the calls himself because he was acting as his own agent. The Players Association recognizes players being their own agent. Mario Addison, former Buffalo Bill, he was his own agent. But I think there's a big difference between a player like Mario Addison being his own agent and a quarterback seeking a top three all time NFL contract being yes. his own agent. Right. <laughs> like there's a there's a distinct difference. So yeah. Lamar lost the ability to get help by being his own agent. And he had to physically call organizations in that time period of being told, hey, we're going to tag you. And it's non-exclusive, so you can go call organizations and see if you can get somebody to trade for you. It's going to cost them two first-round picks. If you're Lamar Jackson, you're calling organizations. The, the sell point there is really hard, right? Because you're trying to sell yourself to other organizations. And the truth is, whatever organization you sell yourself to, you're also going to need to renegotiate your contract because they're not going to they're not going to sign you for you know what the one franchise year is right you're gonna have to sign a longer term deal we're talking about things that could take months and hours and mm -hmm. it's just not a good recipe for a player of lamar's caliber to be his own agent and, and i 100 absolutely advocate for players using their uh, intelligence in the sport of football be that financially or be that on the field right or be that life after football but this kind of stuff hurts life after football. Like this makes it hard because Lamar is, you know, having to do a lot of the dirty work that he really should be paying somebody who knows how to do this stuff. And, yeah. and I want, I want to tell, you know, I say kudos to Lamar for giving this a shot. But the fact is that this is a dangerous conversation because these are big boys, you know, like these yeah, guys, yeah. they don't, they don't play. You're they make their millions, living doing millions, that. millions of dollars. You know I mean? Yeah, that's right. That's, that's what they do. The other thing that, I mean, you bring up some really great points, Paul. And the other thing that probably halted the progression is the the individuals that came before him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what possibly hurt him because, you know, this story has been written before. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about where Greg Roman has been in his career. Yeah. yeah. And Greg Roman at one point in time was with the San Francisco 49ers and there was a very young Colin Kaepernick that got mm -hmm. a six year, I think six year, $126 million deal. Um, I know a lot of that, you know, you talk about numbers. That's, that's the big numbers they talk about, but right. Yeah, that wasn't, had, that wasn't the real money in that yeah. deal. Yeah. San Francisco yeah. had things in there to protect themselves against the contract. And I understand that. However, once Greg Roman left Colin Kaepernick, he ended up going three and 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things and got bad. This is from a team that was coached by Harbaugh and then was not coached by Harbaugh. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of parallels that come on when you want to talk about comparing the on field abilities of Colin Kaepernick and Lamar Jackson. You know, two guys that can just run you out of the building. Mm -hmm. Two guys that, I mean, I think Colin Kaepernick has a stronger arm than Lamar Jackson, but Lamar Jackson has more accurate. So when you talk about comparing their, their two skill sets, they're very comparable. And the offensive philosophies that were brought in by Greg Roman, I think that's the key here when you yeah. want to talk about it, is the fact that they had a very run-centric, run-first offense where the threat of the quarterback's legs was going to be a very big uh, driving force of mm -hmm. the offense. Yeah. They utilized their tight ends. Yeah. more. It was more so Anquan Bolden and, my, and um, Vernon Davis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got Mark Andrews and, you know, put X receiver here. 
You yeah. know, they didn't really have a possession guy, you know, for Baltimore. I guess that was the evolution of the position by the time Greg Roman got to Baltimore. But the point being is there's this. But there was Bolden again, you know, know it was like, Bolden again. It was Bolden but you, again. But you start to see what this this happened before. Yeah. With Greg Roman. I think that's the thing that not many people are mentioning is the fact that Greg Roman's departure was probably the first, you know, pillar to fall. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could, we could talk about Lamar trying to be his own agent, but I think it's almost like the planets aligning for Lamar in some of the things that are going on. He tried he tried to be his own agent. Greg, Greg Roman having a, a very athletic quarterback to play with, and then when he left, the quarterback fell apart. Yeah, you know, and and X, Y, and Z that happens. So yeah. that all combined, I think, is the reason why Lamar Jackson is not signed up. Yeah, is is Lamar Jackson good enough to be an NFL quarter? He's a former MVP. He's still yeah. in his prime. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, oh, all signs point to this. The, the hardships yeah. that Lamar is facing aren't deserved, right? No, like no. teams should be clamoring to get Lamar. That, yes. That's that's the truth. The problem is Baltimore is, has kind of set him up to fail because they like to gamble on the quarterback in the contract year. They do. And, it's, and it has hurt them over and over again. Uh, and this is just another example. Lamar, the, the things that Lamar is suffering are not necessarily from his doing there are some things that he hasn't helped himself with. Right. No. And it's sort of a, a sort of a, a large scale storm of a player trying to advocate for themselves. And I, again, I 100% support that. I wish Lamar got better advice to get a little bit of help here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause I think, cause I think a lot of times, I think if you looked around to all the other teams, mm-hmm. the NFL in the, in the in NFL right now, You could, if you're looking, you could find teams that Lamar Jackson could be very, very successful with. Sure. In the NFL right now. However, I don't think in the time that it happened, I don't think that teams felt that he would be available. Now, I'll I'll, I'll bring this back to the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills, with their second round pick, took James Cook. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the season, Christian McCaffrey became available. Mm Mm-hmm. Bean and McDermott have a relationship with Carolina. Yep. If they would have made a call, I'm sure the price tag wouldn't have been as high mm-hmm. as, as San Francisco's was if he was getting traded to both. But they just invested a second round pick in a young quarter in a young running back. Right. I'm sure the Bills would have loved to have Christian McCaffrey for mm-hmm. the stretch run going down the road. They didn't know he was going to be available. I think a lot of these teams that people are saying Lamar Jackson could go to. I didn't think they feel they felt that he would be available for them, so they've already either spent their money, mm-hmm. they've they have the they have their big boards out where they're who they're going to draft and they're doing their due diligence and research and saying, right. oh my god, like yeah, he's available, but if we'd have known this a year ago, we could have planned for it, put some cap aside, cut these guys, cut this guy, and do, and did things to get Lamar on their team that maybe avail you know available teams that he would he would be successful for would go like I think Carolina was one of them mm-hmm. but they ended up doing what they're doing now I, I think all that stuff they positioned themselves in the draft say okay we're going to take a young quarterback we're going to build around him we're going to do this mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Well, and, and again if you're if you're Baltimore you okay Mark no no I'm saying I'm saying they said they traded with with uh, Chicago to get the number one pick, and then all right. this news Lamar comes out, and everyone's right. saying he should go yeah. to Carolina. I'm like, they right. already made their bed. Do you know what I mean? Right. And and you know, unfortunately, right? There's a lot of quarterbacks that teams are really pining for right now in this yeah. draft, right? Yeah. So it's not exactly the perfect draft to be effectively a free agent, right? Because Lamar is oh. looking for trade partners, but there's a lot of paperwork that's got to go along with this. You know, and Baltimore's oh, yeah. done him no favors. Um, and Baltimore is they're not really even positioned to draft a quarterback. So I feel like they're just trying to call his bluff here and say, listen, you can go out and try and find a trade partner, but you're gonna sign this tag. Like you could say that you yeah. demand a trade, but it's better to come come back, prove that you can do it without Roman, make yourself a far more attractive free agent next offseason. You know, and there's promises sometimes made behind closed doors where they say, listen, we assure you we will not tag you next year. 
we assure you we will not tag you. You yeah, sign the yeah. tag and you play for us. We promise not to tag you. Now, does that carry any weight? No, of course not. They could go back on their word and franchise tag them the following year, right? But the for 60 fact, million. <laughs> right. But I think what Baltimore did was they said, we're going to call your bluff. We don't think you can do this on your own. And we're going to use that against you. And it's like when us when you know when you go against the big corporation, the small guy doesn't win, right? The big corporation just waits you out. They they're like they're you know big corporations and legal in, in institutions. They will just slowly squeeze you until they get what they want. And I think Baltimore is just saying we're just going to keep putting some pressure on you by knowing that you have limited options because you're entering the free agent pool probably a little later than you want. You don't have an agent to make phone calls for. You can't get help in that. You have to negotiate your own contract extension, which when you tried with us didn't go very well. So I can't imagine how it's going to go with another organization from Baltimore's perspective. They're willing to wait this out because the truth of the matter is without Roman there, how attractive is Lamar Jackson to Baltimore to, from their perspective, not as valuable as, $32 $32 million. Like they're really willing to just say 32 million. We'll roll the dice with Lamar this year. And then I guess we'll just wait it out again because th- this organization has done this before. And it's a shame to see it happen to, you know, a top five quarterback in the NFL. But yeah, the, 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 the players association could have been more help to Lamar, but the rules aren't set up for that. The rules are set up to players to be their own advocate. If they want to, the players association should have, more ways to help players with tools and resources when they want to be their own agent, instead of just leaving them out on an Island to let them figure it out on their own. The players association really failed Lamar Jackson here because there's no resources for him because he's the first marquee player to do this. And it's a shame to watch him struggle because he doesn't deserve it. No, he doesn't at all. Right. For Baltimore's sake though, Rolling the dice, as we talked about many times with contracts. Uh, franchise tag is all base salary, guys. Yeah. So he's free to trade for Baltimore. So it's not like they wouldn't want to find a trade partner for him to get right. some value. Teams just know they can wait it out. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in Lamar Jackson, you just wait out the 2023 season. You pick him up as a free agent. You don't have to give any compensation right. to, a, to, another, uh, to Baltimore. Right. And I guess that's what they're hoping for. But the, the key to it now... After it was all said and done, I mean, obviously you can't go back in time. What Lamar Jackson needs to do now is to strap up and he needs to play like he's he's capable of playing in the 2023 season without Greg Roman, and a lot of teams will call him. He won't have to make yeah. any calls. Yeah. So I, I feel that's that's the path that he needs to go. But what I want, I that's that's why I wanted to kind of talk to with you about it because there are so many other factors that were going into this whole Lamar thing. And people are just so quick to retweet something or say something or to compare them to, uh, you know, with Josh Allen. And I was, I understand the comparison. Mm-hmm. I mean, we understand the comparison, but yeah. a lot of other factors in here that could have gone differently if he had an agent, mm-hmm. things were going on. But this is, like Paul said, this is not new to Baltimore. No. They, they've done this quite a bit. And I think DaCosta was there too when the whole Joe Flacco thing kind of ended. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and I mean, remember, like we're in 2024 right now. They could have negotiated a contract extension for Lamar in January of his third season. Yes. So it come tw- come January 2022, while they're still in the 2021 season. Yeah, they. So that this has been ongoing for a, a long, long, long time, and you know it to not only make it through the end of the 2021 season where no contract extension is negotiated, but then to go through the entire 2022 season, he gets, you know, he gets hurt and that, that removes his leverage. So I don't blame him for waiting, right? Cause he, he removes his leverage by getting hurt, but there, there was a couple of years where this could have been resolved. And, and unfortunately here we are. Yeah. Most of the time teams will try to get those contracts before the player ends up exploding. However, Lamar exploded in his second season. Right. So that's yeah. when his value was essentially the highest. And and we don't know what was going on behind closed doors of what no. the contracts behind closed doors could have been because he could have. But I know that in 2021 is a lot cheaper than it is now. 
Yeah. Awesome. Ain't that the <laughs> truth? I mean, you could have gone to the table and only had to go through Watson once, like Paul said. You know, yeah. I mean? instead of going through Watson twice when he gets two deals. And then, right. then you look at Russell Wilson's deal up in Denver, and you look at a lot of these contracts that are coming out from a lot of these players, and you're like, the waiting game didn't help Baltimore. No, it all. sure didn't. It sure and, didn't. And you know, the 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 truth of the matter is there's one, two, three, four, five, six quarterbacks. I'm sorry, five quarterbacks right now who have deals not only over two hundred thousand dollars, but the lowest of them being two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And that's Watson, right? Million, like, million. Isn't that crazy? Two hundred million, you're saying, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two hundred million. Yeah. So that there's a huge, huge gap. It goes like Rogers at one fifty, and then Deshaun Watson at two thirty. Like there is a stark difference. Well, I mean Stafford's in there, I guess, and Dak Prescott's at one sixty. But like mm-hmm. right around one sixty, there's nobody at one seventy. There's nobody at one eighty. There's nobody at one ninety. <laughs> there's nobody at two hundred. There is a massive gap in that, and that's what's so curious to me. Because I wonder where Baltimore was aiming, right? Because yeah. you're either making $160 million as a quarterback, and there's a group of them in that area. And then there's like a $70 million difference <laughs> between those quarterbacks and the next tier of quarterback. And uh, I I don't know how uh, the NFL allowed that to happen, right? Yeah. And how the Players Association allowed that to happen because – there it's a crazy difference between between it's wild to me. I, I don't know how it happened. I don't know if Baltimore was aiming for that $160 million mark. And, and Lamar's like, no, I'm in the $240 million mark. That's enough. There's you're $70 million apart, right? Yep. That's, maybe that's that. Maybe that's the problem, right? You look at the tier of quarterback. Baltimore says, no, nah, dude, you're not in, you're not in this top tier. You're in the second tier. And Lamar goes, no, that's not possible. There's no middle ground. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Like, honestly, if I was Lamar in the, in the problems that he had in Baltimore that everyone would say is a consensus of him having talent around him, mm-hmm. wide receivers and this and that, wouldn't it be who of him to sacrifice that $70 million for two stud wideouts? Yeah, but you know that's not how this works. No, I know. I know that's not how it works, but I'm just trying to think out loud here and say, listen, you know, he wants to be paid more than Watson, and that's that's been documented in the mm-hmm. media for him. He said he wants to be, but you know, if you're if you're talking to any other quarterback, I think they would want to have weapons around him as well as right. money because you yeah. have many more questions to answer once you're getting paid that money versus mm-hmm. when you're on your rookie deal. Well, and so, Watson is the lowest paid of those two hundred plus million dollar quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. You know, like that he's the watermark. That, yeah. That's the contractual watermark. And I don't blame Lamar for shooting for it. His resume says he deserves it. But when you think you deserve it and your organization doesn't, and there's a huge pay gap to the next level of quarterback, yeah, the, these things happen. Yeah. Yep. Give us your uh, your thoughts in the comments, ladies and gentlemen, about the, the whole Lamar Jackson situation. Uh, as always, you can find us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, we're also on iTunes and Spotify. Tonight's show was sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes in association with Cryer Media and our 2023 charity, the Williams Syndrome Foundation. That's Paul. I, that's Paul over there. That's Paul. I'm Mario. We're Hashtag Sports. Uh, hit that like, subscribe button, guys.